Thank you for purchasing our product. We're sure you'll be glad you chose our machine, and it will bring you much enjoyment in the fantastic world of embroidery and quilting. Preparation Connecting the power supply This machine is equipped with a two-way speed control for sewing. You can use either the foot control or the start-stop button to operate the machine. Before connecting the machine to the power supply, make sure to turn the power switch off. If you use the foot control, insert the pin connector into the jack. Connect the power supply cord by inserting the plugs into the machine and a power outlet. After using the foot control, store the cord under the base cover of the foot control. Machine Operating Buttons the machine operating buttons are conveniently grouped together for easy access while sewing. Start-Stop Button Press the Start-Stop button to start or to stop the machine. Please note, however, that the Start-Stop button will not work when the foot control is connected. The machine will run slowly as long as this button is pressed, and will start running at the speed set by the speed control slider when the button is released. Pressing this button while the machine is running will slow down the machine, and it will stop when the button is released. This function is extremely useful when precise control of stitching is necessary. Reverse Button the machine will sew in reverse as long as the reverse button is being pressed. To secure the beginning of a seam, press and hold down this button so that the machine will sew in reverse at the slowest speed. When other patterns are selected, pressing the reverse button causes the machine to lock the stitch in place and stop automatically. Auto Lock Button The machine immediately locks the stitch and will stop automatically by pressing the Auto Lock button when these patterns have been selected. When other patterns are selected, the machine will sew to the end of the pattern being sewn, then lock the stitch and stop automatically. Needle Up Down Button Press this button to raise or lower the needle. Presser Foot Lifter Button The presser foot will go up or down by pressing this button. You can also raise or lower the presser foot manually with the presser foot lifter. Thread Cutter Button Press this button to trim the threads after sewing. The needle and presser foot will automatically rise after trimming the threads. You can sew the next stitch without pulling the bobbin thread up. If you use thick threads or the twin needle, use the thread cutter on the faceplate. Speed Control Slider The Speed Control Slider sets the maximum sewing speed. To decrease the speed, shift the slider to the left.
Shift to the right to increase the speed. Winding the bobbin. Extra spool pin. Use the extra spool pin when you need to wind the bobbin without unthreading the machine. Insert the extra spool pin into the hole for the spool pin. Place a spool of thread on it and secure the spool with the spool holder. Winding the bobbin. Press the lockout key. Slide the hook cover release button to the right and remove the hook cover. Take out the bobbin. Put the bobbin on the bobbin winder spindle. Press the lockout key to unlock the machine. Place a spool of thread on the spool pin and secure the spool with the spool holder. Hold the thread with both hands and pass it under the thread guide plate. Draw the thread to the left and forward around the thread guide cover A. Firmly pull the thread to the right while holding it with your hands. Hold the thread with both hands and wind it around the bobbin clockwise several times. Insert the thread into one of the slits of the flange plate and pull the thread to cut it. Push the bobbin winder spindle to the right. The bobbin mark will appear on the LCD screen. Start the machine. Stop the machine when the bobbin is fully wound and stop spinning. Return the bobbin winder spindle to the left. Remove the bobbin and cut the thread with the thread cutter. Inserting the bobbin. Press the lockout key. Raise the foot. Place the bobbin in the bobbin holder with the thread running off counterclockwise. Hold the bobbin in place with your fingertip so it does not rotate. Guide the thread into the front notch of the bobbin holder. Pass the thread under the guide and pull it to the left. Pass the thread into the guide paths marked 1 and 2. Pull the thread to the right through the slit. Insert the hook cover plate. Threading the machine. Raise the needle by pressing the needle up down button. Press the lockout key. Place a spool of thread on the spool pin and secure the spool with the spool holder. Hold the thread with both hands and pass it under the thread guide plate. Still holding the thread with your hands, draw the thread firmly around the corner and toward you along the channel. While holding the thread at the spool, pull the thread down along the right channel. Pull the thread up around the guide plate and along the left channel. Slip the thread into the eye of the take-up lever and pull it down along the left channel. Pass the thread through the lower thread guide from the right to the left. Pass the thread through the needle bar thread guide from the right and draw it to the left firmly. Holding the thread near the spool with your hand, pull the thread up to the left over the needle threader guide. Be sure that the thread passes the slit of the needle threader. Pull the thread up. Slip the thread between the thread cutter and the face plate. 
Pull the needle threader knob down as far as it will go. Raise the threader slowly so a loop of the thread is pulled up through the needle eye. Pull the thread end through the needle eye. You need to drop the bobbin thread when sewing gathering stitches, etc. For drawing up the bobbin thread, see the instruction manual. Replacing the needle plate. Press the lockout key. Press the presser foot lifter button to raise the presser foot. Slide the extension table to the left to remove it. Push down the needle plate release lever and the needle plate will pop up. A warning message will appear to remind you that the needle plate is not secured. Remove the needle plate by lifting it to the right. Insert the left edge of the straight stitch needle plate into the opening. Push down on the mark of the needle plate until it is locked in place. Check to make sure that the confirmation message appears. Press the X key. Turn the hand wheel slowly and check that the needle does not hit the needle plate. Press the lockout key to unlock the machine. Replacing the presser foot. Raise the needle by pressing the needle up down button. Press the lockout key. Raise the presser foot with the foot lifter. Press the lever on the back of the foot holder and the presser foot will drop off. Place the desired foot under the foot holder so the pin on the foot lies just under the groove on the foot holder. Lower the foot with the foot lifter to lock the foot in place. Press the unlock key. Replacing the foot holder. When using the dual feed feet, darning foot, or embroidery foot, you need to replace the foot holder. Raise the needle by pressing the needle up down button. Press the lockout key. Raise the foot with the foot lifter. Loosen the thumb screw and remove the foot holder. Attach the dual feed foot holder to the presser bar from behind. Tighten the thumb screw with your fingers. Push the dual feed link to engage with the upper feed driver. Lower the foot and the needle. Tighten the thumb screw firmly with the screwdriver to secure the foot holder. Raise the needle and the foot. Press the lockout key to unlock the machine. Dropping the feed dog. The feed dog can be lowered with the drop feed lever located on the right side of the machine. Shift the lever towards you to drop the feed dog. Shift the lever away from you to raise the feed dog and it will return to the up position when you start the machine. Ordinary Sewing Selecting Patterns This machine offers a wide selection of stitch patterns and monograms. The flip-up reference chart helps you identify all the patterns at a glance. The patterns are listed in groups for easy reference. When turning the power switch on, the LCD screen will show straight stitch 1 has been selected. Press one of the category selection keys to select the category.
Select the group and select the pattern. Manual Stitch Settings. This machine is programmed to provide the optimal stitch length and width, as well as thread tension for the selected pattern. However, you can make adjustments to suit your specific sewing needs. Press the setting bar to expand the manual setting window. You can adjust the zigzag width, stitch length, elongation ratio, thread tension, and foot pressure by pressing the plus or minus key. Press the setting bar to shrink the manual setting window. Press the default key to return the settings to the default values. Auto thread cutting. To cut the threads after sewing, press the thread cutter button. The machine trims the threads. Then the needle and presser foot move up automatically. When you turn on the auto thread cutting option in the ordinary sewing setting mode, the machine trims the threads automatically after the locking stitches are finished. Buttonholes. There are various styles of buttonholes available. The machine will sew a properly sized buttonhole automatically in a single step. Place the button on the back of the automatic buttonhole foot and push back the holder to hold the button. Buttonhole length is determined automatically. You can also fine-tune the buttonhole size by turning the adjusting screw. Press the lockout key. Raise the presser foot lifter. Attach the buttonhole foot. Draw the needle thread to the left through the hole of the buttonhole foot. Press the lockout key to unlock the machine. Place the fabric under the foot. Lower the needle into the starting point by turning the hand wheel. Lower the presser foot. Pull down the buttonhole lever as far as it will go. Start sewing while pulling the needle thread lightly to the left. After several stitches, free the needle thread and continue sewing. The machine will stop automatically when the buttonhole is complete. Programming a pattern combination. You can program stitch patterns as well as letters to make a pattern combination. Press the Category Selection key and press the Satin Stitch key. Press the Program key so you can program the pattern combination. Select Pattern 4 and Pattern 7. The patterns are automatically programmed. Press the Vertical Mirror key and select Pattern 7. A vertical mirror image of the pattern is programmed. Select the auto lock stitch to program it. The machine will sew the pattern combination, lock off the stitches at the end, and then stop automatically. Press the thread cutter button and the machine will trim the threads. Embroidery. Embroidery setting. Turn the power switch off. Remove the cover. Set the embroidery unit onto the back side of the machine. 
slide the embroidery unit along the machine body to the right and push it firmly until it fits securely. Be sure to use the embroidery foot and the straight stitch needle plate. Turn the power switch on. Press down the carriage arm release lever. Swing out the carriage arm until it locks in the fully extended position. Press the mode switch key. Press the OK key and the carriage moves to the starting position. Select the appropriate hoop for the pattern you wish to embroider and set your fabric in the hoop. Attach the hoop to the carriage, inserting the lock pin of the hoop into the hole in the carriage. Turn the knob clockwise to secure the hoop. Selecting patterns from built-in designs. Press the built-in design key and the pattern selection window opens. You can browse the pattern list by design category or by hoop size. Browse the list with the page key until the desired pattern is shown. Select the desired pattern by pressing the pattern icon key. Press the OK key. Editing the embroidery designs. In the editing mode, you can edit and combine designs to create your own original embroidery designs. Press the editing mode key to open the editing window. You need to select the appropriate hoop before editing the designs. Press the hoop selection key and select the hoop you wish to use. Press the home key. You can open the built-in designs, monograms, and designs from the USB flash drive into the editing window. Select the data source for the design you wish to open. Select the desired pattern in the pattern selection window. The editing window displays the pattern you selected. Press the layout keys to move the design in the editing window or drag the design to the desired position. To change the size of the design, press the resize key and the resize window opens. Press the plus or minus key to change the design size. Press the OK key. To make a copy of the design, press the duplicate key. When you need to delete the design, select the design and press the delete key. Press the rotate key to open the rotate window. Press one of the four keys to rotate the design clockwise or counterclockwise. Press the OK key. To flip the design, press the vertical mirror key or horizontal mirror key. Press the OK key and the Ready to Sew window appears. Creating an original design. Let's make an original design by combining a built-in design and lettering. Press the editing mode key and the editing window for the hoop RE20A opens. Press the home key. Press the built-in design key. Select the desired pattern in the pattern selection window. Press the resize key and reduce the size to 80%. Press the OK key. Press the layout keys to move the design. Press the home key and press the monogram key. Enter F, L, O, W, E, R. Press the OK key. Press the art key. The arc layout window opens. Press the lower arc key three times and press the enlarge key four times. Press the OK key and move the lettering under the design.
press the custom color key and select the desired color for the lettering. Press the OK key. Removing the embroider unit. Remove the embroidery unit after embroidery sewing. Remove the embroidery hoop from the carriage. Press the mode switch key. Press the OK key to return the carriage to the storage position. Push the carriage arm release lever down and retract the carriage arm. Turn the power switch off. Press the Embroidery Unit Release button and remove the embroidery unit to the left. Attach the cover. File Management Saving the designs as a stitch data file. You can save original embroidery designs created in embroidery mode or programmed pattern combinations in ordinary sewing mode as files in the built-in memory and or USB flash drive. Press the Save File key to open the Save File window. A folder labeled EMBF in the embroidery mode or ORDF in the ordinary sewing mode is displayed on the screen. Press the built-in memory key or USB flash drive key to select the location to save the file. Open the folder. The file name is assigned automatically starting from number M001. If you wish to change the file name, press the Rename key to open the keyboard window. Enter the new name and press the OK key. Press the OK key to save the design under the new name. Opening a file. When you press the Open File key, the Open File window appears. Press the built-in memory key or USB flash drive key to select the location. Open the folder. Press the desired file icon and the embroidery window of the saved design appears on the screen. Press the OK key. Customizing the machine settings. You can customize the machine settings in the setting mode. Press the set mode key to enter the setting mode. There are five setting modes. The common setting, ordinary sewing setting, embroidery setting, network setting, and language selection. For example, let's customize the maximum embroidery sewing speed. Press the Embroidery Setting Mode key to open the Embroidery Setting Mode window. Go to page 2 by pressing the page key. Press the plus key to increase the speed, or press the minus key to decrease the speed. To activate your custom setting, press the OK key. Care and Maintenance Replacing the needle Check the needle frequently to ensure that its tip is not rough or blunt. Replace it with a new needle if it is dull or bent. Be sure to turn off the machine and disconnect it from the power supply. Loosen the needle clamp screw with a screwdriver and remove the needle. Insert a new needle with the flat side to the back. Push the needle up against the stopper and tighten the needle clamp screw securely with the screwdriver. Cleaning the hook area. 
It is recommended to clean the hook area and the automatic thread cutter device at least once a month. Be sure to turn off the machine and disconnect it from the power supply. Remove the needle and the presser foot. Remove the extension table. Push down the needle plate release lever and remove the needle plate. Remove the bobbin and the bobbin holder. Clean the bobbin holder with a lint brush. Apply a few drops of the bobbin holder cleaner to a soft cloth and wipe the bobbin holder both inside and outside. Clean the feed dog, thread cutter device, and hook raise with a lint brush. Wipe the inside of the hook raise with the cloth. Attach the bobbin holder in the hook race, making sure the knob fits next to the stopper of the hook race. Insert the left edge of the needle plate into the opening and push down on the mark of the needle plate until it is locked in place. Turn the power switch on to make sure a warning message does not appear. Attach the extension table and attach the needle and the presser foot. Wipe the machine body with a soft cloth. Never use benzene or other chemical solvents for cleaning the machine body. Regular maintenance will ensure that your machine runs trouble-free.